Um, thank you, Chairman, for the introducing words. Um, dear ladies and gentlemen, um, the incidence of uh, luxation or dislocation after revision is much higher uh, than after primary. This is well known, it's up to 20%. And if you look to the therapy options, so from the literature we can see that 60% is treated conservatively and 30% uh, is uh, needs an operative revision. And from this uh, revisions, we have a real luxation rate, which is quite high from 20 to 50%. That means relaxation after revision surgery because of uh, luxation represents a challenge. What we have for causes for this location? So we found a lot. It's a component uh, alignment problem, biomechanics, uh, impingement could be a, a reason, the approach as well, a bony or muscular insufficiency, the age plays a role, or gender and the compliance, of course, neuromuscular deficits and the uh, capsular insufficiency. This is uh, the first three things, I would say, this is hardware problems, the other ones is um, something of soft tissue or patient-related problems. What we have to do is, uh, before we treat a patient, we have to assess correctly the risk for the luxation. Prior, we planned this revision. We have to identify the luxating causing factors, and of course, we have to think before we treat. We have to check clinical very exactly, check the limb length and the function of the hip. We have to evaluate it, the patient's compliance and think about the approach. Detailed, uh, well, it's necessary to detail analyze the biomechanics of our X-rays, looking for the correct hip center, looking for the offset, and looking, for example, for the inclination. All these uh, lines and uh, things have to be um, think about, uh, which are documented here. And the component alignment needs uh, also the anteversion. As, uh, from the cup and the stem, uh, beside inclination, CCD, angle, and offset, and to evaluate this uh, rotational CT scan is necessary to analyze the combined antiversion. Um, we know all these uh, recommendations uh, from beginning from the from 78 uh, to uh, actual literature, and um, you see there's some recommendation, and uh, we have always to consider the combination of stem and cup antiversion. Analyze the muscle function that we can do clinical and using an MRI. The clinical test is uh, the patient lays in the side position of the healthy side, and we have to perform this abduction test, especially an internal rotation. If this is able, or the patient is able for this uh, test, then the cruteus medius muscle are intact. If the patient can only perform this in a much external rotation, then we have a clinical, typical clinical sign for an abductor dysfunction beside this Trendelenburg sign. And if you perform the MRI, then we can see here the fatty atrophy of the gluteus medius muscle, and this is an, a typical sign of a, a muscular insufficiency and causes, uh, can cause a luxation. Latest location are uh, typical for infection or excessive wear problems with a effusion in the joint which pressing out our head from the acetabular. Um, what we have for classification, one we know is the classification to Vera, or we have developed the Charité classification by Professor Perka. Um, here um, divided uh, into four types. Type one is the component malposition, problem, the type 2, the insufficiency of the pelvic trontal muscles, and um, we have an implant impingement problem or causes, and as I mentioned, the uh, incongruence of the head and acetabular liner, which means uh, an effusion inside and uh, like uh, caused by an infection or wear, and we have a combined, uh, we have combined problems. So component alignment, as I mentioned, we have to consider all this safe zones for inclination antiversion, and the therapy should be revised the malalignment. And it's better uh, to early revise uh, than uh, do a delayed revision 
uh, this is better for the results. And uh, for the type two, pelvic trontech insufficiency. The causes could be, as I mentioned, muscle problems, but also inadequate reconstruction of leg length and offset, inadequate refixation of gluteal muscles or external rotators, and uh, also the reason could be a trochanteric fracture. So here's an example, a 48 years uh, lady complains about abductor weakness, limping and trochanteric tro tro pain, and we're looking for the biomechanics and it looks not bad, quite good, there's no problem obvious, but uh, we have to consider the muscles and uh, in such case you should perform an MRI and you could see this grade four atrophy of the gluteus muscle with the huge tendon defect and this is uh, causing the dislocation or subluxation problems of the lady. And what we have to do in such cases, we have to refixate or reconstruct if possible the muscle and the tendon. We can do a, a muscle transposition uh, like a vastus flap or white side plastic. We can use uh, dual mobility cups or refixate with the aim of mutas tube or tendon graft and we can reconstruct the offset uh, or the leg, and with this the leg length by using a lateral shaft, a lateralized inlay or offset adapters. But keep in mind, this should not be the solution. Don't overstress your offset reconstruction. This is not biomechanical correct. Um, here's an example, a patient with a tumor, the proximal femur, so it was resected and the muscles are refixated on this mutans tube. Um, for stable joint, okay, here we see, and this is the x-ray, so um, all the muscles are refixated here on the mutas tube for stable um, hip. Dual mobility, as I mentioned, um, when we look for the literature, there are some excellent um, um, dislocation rates in the case of revision, they can decrease to 2%, um, usually it's 5 to 20, so it seems to be um, a good results with a dual mobility in revision cases. Here's our case, for example, it's a 87 year old male from a nursing home with a dementia. He has a trauma traumatic dislocation and after a closed reduction he has an unstable hip. So we replace the cup with a dual mobility and refixate a, a torontoic fracture and the patient goes well. Another uh, possibility used to dual mobility is in, in connection with cages. So if you cement it into a cage, a dual mobility cup, then you can lowering the dislocation rate to 6.5%, which is quite good compared to 12 to 70% without such a dual mobility cup. Um, so we can say dual mobility in uh, dislocation patients is an effective uh, possibility to reduce the dislocation rate and uh, especially in connection with an pelvic trochanteric insufficiency. Type 3, this is an impingement problem caused by also component, component malpositioning by component related factors like an anti-luxation rim, a head-neck ratio problem or ossifies or cement rests. To revise this problem should be the solution Type 4 means um, uh, there's some of effusion into the joint which pressing out the head of the acetabula caused by an infection or by veer and the therapy is with respect to these problems. Multiple problems uh, could be also reasons exclude the infection um, and you have to choose the combined strategies. Here's an example, a 86 year old female with uh, uh, one year after revision, total hip autoplasty, he suffered recurring, uh, recurrent uh, posterior hip dislocations, has a trochanteric fracture and a limping gait. And if you look for the retinational CT scan, we see a retroversion of the modular stem. And what we can recognize is a high inclination of the cup, if a stem retroversion of the modular stem, a head with a flange, which could be a problem, and a trochanteric fracture. And the treatment from our side was replace the cup to a dual mobility caused by the insufficiency of the muscles and correct the retroversion of the modular stem. With our classification system, we have a quite good success rate if we treat for every type. 
So you can see here our success rate, and especially in type 2 and uh, 5, you can uh, increase this rate by using a triple R or dual mobility cup. What is with the larger heads? Um, there are some indications when for using larger heads in revisions to reduce the uh, dislocation ri risk, so especially in patients with a previous ankylosis, with a missed greater trochanter, with a chronic dislocated hip, uh, or by a reimplantation in case of a girdle stone uh, situation, or in post traumatic um, arthritis or post traumatic revisions. But we should know the large head uh, by its own is not a sole uh, procedure when we have combined problems, as you can see here. The advantage of the larger heads is um, we improve the stability by increasing the range of motion, the jumping distance, um, and um, by this we have a, a better stability of our hip joint. Here you can see uh, the increasing jumping distance when we use um, a bigger heads. There's, a, there's a more distance when it's needed to jump out of our uh, aligner with a bigger head, and here you can see uh, as bigger the head, as bigger is the range of motion, the theoretical range of motion. Then we have to know uh, with smaller heads, we have more the implant, implant associated problems, impingement, and with uh, uh, larger heads, it's more a bone to bone problem. And that might be the reason that uh, heads uh, bigger than 36. Um, have no more advantage than 36 uh, heads. In former times, we have the problem that when we increase the head size, then we increase the rates of wear with conventional polyethylene, but this seems not more a problem uh, with the highly cross-linked uh, polyethylene, so the amount of wear seems to be independent of the head size. Um, we have to keep in mind that uh, we use a bigger head, then the liner comes thinner. So it's, uh, uh, using a bigger head is limited by the component, by the acetabula or socket size, and we need from some publication that the liner thickness should be more than five millimeter in every size, otherwise we will accelerate our wear or other problems. And as in conclusion, larger heads, uh, so 36 millimeters seems to be enough. And uh, not only the head is the problem, also it, is, it should be treated in combination with other problems. Um, and uh, we have to know that the stability of our joint um, is mostly, or depends mostly on the component orientation. So that means reorientation of the components and restoration of the soft tissue is more important uh, than larger heads. That is what, what we have to know or to think about. So success against this location is in dependency of the function of the biomechanics on the orientation of the components and mal-orientation of the components cannot be effectively treated by only increasing the head size. Um, shortly, something to constraint liners. It's also a possibility, but we recommend to use it only in some special cases because from the literature we have uh, to know that there are uh, high re revision rates when using these constraint liners. In conclusion, we have to found the cause of this location before we treat and operate, and that means um, four main uh, facts exclude the malalignment, exclude uh, pelvic toronteric insufficiency, exclude a uh, component impingement, and exclude infection or wear problems. Thank you for your attention.